What's your favorite spread this weekend? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uncertainty, obviously, with the NFL right now, but I have no problem taking the Rams minus four and a half this week uh, uh, in, in that matchup. I, I, I just think that they should roll over the 49ers. I think this 49ers team, one of the biggest frauds in the NFL, they <laughs> might have a good record. This team stinks, okay? I, it's like the Ravens. You're watching the Ravens. You look at their record, you go, how do they have this kind of record? I have no idea. I love the Rams this week. Uh, I think they should have no problem covering at home against a 49ers team that is trying to get into the playoffs, but they're also trying to stop a team that's trying to get Cooper Cup a new NFL record. Give me the Rams minus four and a half. Come on now. All right, Pierce, go ahead, dude. Your favorite spread. Well, let's talk about the other fraud that Steve just mentioned, the Ravens. They're not a good team. We just watched the Ravens lose to the Steelers, and somehow the Steelers are getting six points. The Steelers are going to win this game. Narratives aside, you can throw out that this is Big Ben's last game, whatever. The Steelers are probably the better team in this matchup. They match up really well. You've got a really good pass rush in the Steelers against an offensive line for the Ravens. That's been terrible all season. We talk about all the terrible parts for the Ravens. We don't talk about their line enough. It's a bad offensive line, 26th and adjusted sack rate. Huntley and Lamar have dealt with pressure every single week. They, uh, I think 19 blitzes against the Ravens in the last matchup, 33% pressure rate against the Ravens dealt by the Steelers last week. The Steelers got nine sacks on Baker Mayfield. That's gonna be a big strength for them. And then offensively, Ben matches up well against his team. He understands this scheme. And I know the line has moved because Deontay Johnson isn't going to play. But let's think about this for a second. He targeted Johnson 15 times last week for 31 yards. We're losing <laughs> 31 yards. Oh, my goodness. That's going to kill us. Actually, it's probably good. This is going to force Ben to throw the ball to Clayville, to, to Ray Ray, to Pat Fryermuth, to Washington, to be more efficient instead of just leaning on Johnson for 31 yards again. I think that this is a steal. Jeff, did I just hear you giggling? I mean, it's it's a pretty impressive stat to get 31 yards on that many targets. It might be a record. Uh, I think Ben could have just rushed for 31 yards. Actually, I, he probably couldn't have. Um, I, I'm, I'm on that game. I'm going to talk about that game a little bit too. But I, I like, uh, since we're throwing out teams that might be frauds this year, I really I really don't know why Arizona all of a sudden is, is seven-point favorites. I think the line may have come down to 6.5 now. It's been fluctuating. But, um, you know, Seattle, I, I get it. Like, they're not that good a team either. It's still Russell Wilson on the other side. You have to cover seven points against. We saw him, what he was doing with DK Metcalf in the last game. He's looked better. Seattle, too, um, as underdogs, over the last five years with Pete Carroll, 18-3-1 and one against the spread. Arizona's also only 2-5 and five against the spread at home. This is still a team that's really struggled in the passing game without DeAndre Hopkins. Even last week, Kyler was more efficient, but like the big plays weren't, weren't there. I don't think Arizona is in any shape to be blowing out teams, let alone one with a quarterback like Russell Wilson. So I really like the, the plus seven, even plus six and a half. I'll take anything over plus six on Seattle this week.